The assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Jair Messias Bolsonaro, President of the Federative Republic of Brazil. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Jair Messias Bolsonaro, President of the Federative Republic of Brazil, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Okay. Good morning, one and all. Mr. President of the General Assembly, Mr. Abdullah Shahid, Mr. Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, heads of state, heads of government, and other heads of delegation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to once again open the United Nations General Assembly. I come here to showcase a different Brazil vis-a-vis what is portrayed on newspapers or seen on television. Brazil has changed a great deal after we took office in January 2019. For two years and eight months, we have had no concrete case of corruption. Brazil has a president who believes in God, respects the Constitution, values family principles, and is loyal to her people. And this is a lot. It is a solid foundation if we take into account that we were at the brink of socialism. Our state-owned enterprises used to incur financial losses in the billions of dollars in the past, whereas now they are profitable companies. Our development bank, our development bank was used to serve as a conduit to finance public works in communist countries with no collateral guarantees. It is the Brazilian people itself who honors or had to honor these commitments and costs. All of that has changed. I present to you now a new Brazil whose credibility has already been recovered in the world. Brazil currently has the largest investment partnership program with the private sector in its history, a program that is already in place and fully underway being implemented so far. 100 billion U.S. dollars have been contracted in new investments and 23 billion dollars have been collected in concession projects granted. In the infrastructure sector, we auctioned 34 airports and 29 port terminals to the private sector. We already have more than 6 billion U.S. dollars in private contracts for new railways. We have also introduced the railway permit system which brings our model closer to the U.S. model. In just a few days, we received 14 applications for permits for new railways, amounting to nearly $15 billion in private investments. Under our administration, we have promoted the revitalization of railway transportation. As a result, less consumption of fossil fuels in the lower level of operational costs for doing business in Brazil, especially translating in lower food production costs. Great progress has already been made in the field of basic sanitation. The largest auction in the sector's, in the sector's history took place in April with concession projects granted to water distribution and sewage services in the state of Rio de Janeiro. We have everything investors look for, a large consumer market, excellent services and assets, a firm tradition of honoring and respecting contracts, and confidence in our administration. I also wish to announce that in the next few days we will be holding an auction for 5G technology deployment in Brazil. Our modern, sustainable, low-carbon agriculture currently feeds more than 1 billion people around the world, while taking up only 8% of our national territory. No other country in the world has such a comprehensive and thorough environmental legislation like ours. Our forest code 
sets an example for other countries to follow. Brazil is a country that is as vast as a continent with great environmental challenges. We are talking about 8.5 million square kilometers, of which 66%, two-thirds of the territory, are native vegetation, the same pristine vegetation that was there since the early 1500s when the country was discovered. In the Amazon biome alone, 84% of the forest is pristine, untouched, while homing the planet's largest, greatest biodiversity. May I call to mind that the Amazonian region in Brazil is as big as the area of all of Western Europe. We have brought forward from 2060 to 2050 our goal of achieving climate neutrality, net zero. Human resources and funding allocated to strengthen environmental institutions have been doubled with a view to totally eliminating illegal deforestation. And the results of this important initiative are already visible. In the Amazon region, we have seen a drop of 32% in deforestation in August as compared to August last year. What other country in the world has an environmental preservation policy like ours? Ladies and gentlemen, you are all invited to come and visit our Amazon. Brazil today is already an example in energy generation. 83% of our energy comes from renewable sources. At the upcoming COP26 conference, we will pursue consensus on rules governing a global carbon credit market, and we do hope industrialized countries will actually fulfill their commitments to climate funding at substantial amounts. The future of green jobs lies in Brazil. Renewable energy plus sustainable agriculture plus low-carbon industries basic sanitation, waste management, and tourism. We have ratified the Inter-American Convention on Racism and Related Forms of Intolerance. We believe that the traditional nuclear family is the very foundation of civilization, and human beings' freedom can only be complete, is only made complete with freedom of worship and freedom of expression. 14% of the Brazilian territory, in other words, more than 110 million hectares, an area as big as Germany and France together, is devoted to indigenous reserves. In these areas, 600,000 indigenous people live in freedom and increasingly wish to use their lands for agriculture and other activities. Brazil has always taken part in the United Nations peacekeeping missions from Suez to the Congo, from Haiti to Lebanon. My country has always welcomed refugees at our border with neighboring Venezuela. Operation Welcome, conducted by the federal government, has already received and welcomed 400,000 Venezuelan citizens who have been displaced, displaced due to the serious political economic crisis bred by the dictatorship regime. The future of Afghanistan is also cause of deep concern for us. We will grant humanitarian visas to Afghan Christians, women, children, and judges. As we celebrate the 20th anniversary of the attacks against the United States of America on September 11th, 20 years ago, we repudiate terrorism in all of its form. In 2022, Brazil will again hold a seat at the United Nations Security Council. I wish to thank the 181 countries out of a total of 190 countries that have trusted Brazil to that effect. It is the result, the visible result of a serious foreign policy, responsible foreign policy led by our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We support a reform of the United Nations Security Council where we seek a permanent seat. The pandemic has caught everyone by surprise in 2020. We do regret all of the deaths that took place in Brazil and worldwide. I have always advocated that we should fight the virus and unemployment at the same time and with the same sense of responsibility. Isolation and lockdown measures left a legacy of inflation, particularly in foodstuffs all over the world. In Brazil, 
to cater to the needs of the low-income population who were forced to stay at home by decisions taken by governors and mayors, people who lost their income, we granted an emergency aid of 800 US dollars to 68 million people in 2020. May I call to mind that we came to the end of 2020, the year of the pandemic, with more formal jobs than was the case back in December 2019, thanks to the actions led by our government, such as, for example, programs to ensure employment conditions and income, which have cost us nearly 40 billion US dollars. This year, in the first seven months alone, we created nearly 1,800,000 new job posts. May I also call to mind that the growth rate forecast for 2021 is estimated at 5%. So far, the federal government has distributed more than 260 million doses of COVID vaccines and more than 140 million Brazilian citizens have already been given at least the first shot which accounts for almost 90% of the adult population and 80% of the indigenous population have already been fully inoculated for COVID. By November this year, all citizens who have chosen to be vaccinated in Brazil will be duly covered. We support vaccination efforts. However, my administration has not supported a vaccine or health passport or any other vaccine-related obligation. Since the pandemic started, we have supported doctors' professional autonomy in the quest for early treatment measures, in line with recommendations issued by the Brazilian Federal Council of Medicine. I myself underwent early treatment for COVID. We, of course, respect the professional doctor-patient relations as regards decisions on the proper medication to be used and also the potential for off-label use. We cannot understand why many countries, together with a large portion of the media, took a stance against early treatment measures. History and science will certainly be wise enough to hold everyone accountable. Last September the 7th, our National Independence Day, millions of Brazilians peacefully and patriotically took to the streets in the largest demonstration in our history to show that they will not give up on democracy, they will not give up individual freedoms, and that they do support our administration. As I have shown, Brazil currently experiences new times. In the economy, we have had one of the best performance levels among emerging countries. My administration has recovered foreign credibility, and today Brazil is one of the best investment destinations in the world. And it is here at this General Assembly that we envision a world with more freedom, more democracy, more prosperity and peace. And may God bless us all. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Brazil for the statement just made, and I request the protocol to escort His Excellency.